human body is really amazing. We already learned in grade 10 and grade 11 that we have various systems in the body. We've got the reproduction system and we've got the breathing system, the digestive system, excretory system, nervous system, and all of these work together harmoniously. And the body actually does not like change. So what happens is that we find a process called homeostasis. Now homeostasis is really the body's way of maintaining a stable internal environment. So despite all these different things going on in the, in the body, homeostasis is going to try and keep everything in balance so that nothing goes out of control. And in this video specifically, we're going to look at the control of blood glucose levels. Now, in grade 10, we also learned about the pancreas as part of the digestive system, that the pancreas actually makes um, digestive enzymes, which goes into the small intestine and then absorb, um, digests your food. But yeah, we are now going to learn about the islets of Langerhans, which are groups of cells found in the pancreas. And these islets of Langerhans in these islets of long runs, these little groups of cells, we find alpha cells and beta cells. Now, the alpha cells highlighted in green here, the little blue circles, are groups of cells that will produce a hormone called glucagon. The yellow groups of cells, the islets of long runs, contain beta cells, and they are responsible for making insulin. Now, insulin and glucagon are the two hormones that is going to control the blood glucose levels within the body. So let's start by looking at what happens when you eat a meal. Now, we already know from grade 10 that when you eat, your food goes into your stomach, which means we're going to find the food. Yeah, okay, right there. That's where we find the food when we've eaten. It goes into your stomach. That's simple enough. From there, the food then gets digested into the um, intestine. So the food is going to go into the intestines and it will be um, digested there by enzymes and then the nutrients like glucose specifically will be absorbed into the bloodstream that means the blood glucose levels are going to increase the moment you've had a meal now when the blood glucose is quite high shortly after a meal it's going to be detected by the pancreas so here we have the pancreas, all right? It's going to detect that we now have a lot of blood glucose in the blood. And the first thing that happens is that the alpha cells are going to detect that there's too much glucose in the blood and it is going to start secreting this hormone called insulin. And insulin is responsible for lowering the blood glucose level. Insulin is going to lower the blood glucose level by doing three things, and this is pretty important. The first thing that, that insulin does is it's going to facilitate the increased rate of glucose being absorbed into the bloodstream. So, oh, sorry, out of the bloodstream. So if the glucose is found here, this is the bloodstream, here we go, in a blood vessel, the glucose is going to move out of the bloodstream. In other words, if this represents the bloodstream and these are the cells, uh, glucose is going to move from the blood into the cells at a faster rate. The second thing that's going to happen is that within the cells, we're going to have cellular respiration happening, but insulin is going to cause the respiration that is happening inside the cells there to actually speed up. And then thirdly, Inside the cells here, the excess glucose is going to be converted into glycogen. And glycogen is the form in which glucose gets stored in both the muscles and in the liver. Now, that storage happens indefinitely until you fast. So what happens if your blood glucose then starts to drop. Let's say you came to school or you go to work or you start doing sport, but you didn't have enough to eat. Then your blood glucose levels are going to drop. 
and again it's going to be detected by the pancreas so again we're going to have the pancreas realizing or detecting that there is now too little glucose and in this case, when there's too little blood glucose, the beta cells are going to secrete the second hormone called glucagon. And glucagon is going to do the opposite of insulin. It is actually going to increase blood glucose levels. Now, how it does that is that the glucagon is going to raise the blood glucose level by doing two things. First of all, it's going to take the glycogen that was stored inside the cells here. Inside these cells, remember, previously, we stored excess glucose in the form of glycogen. So now, that excess glycogen, when we need it, that glycogen is going to be converted back into glucose. Secondly, though that glucose is then going to be released from the muscles and the liver back into the bloodstream. So it's going to go back into the bloodstream so that the glucose can now travel everywhere in the body where it is needed. There is a negative feedback mechanism that exists between the hormones insulin and glucagon. Now insulin and glucagon work antagonistically, which means they work opposite. Between insulin and glucagon, there's this feedback loop that keeps the blood glucose levels within a very narrow range. Now, antagonistically means this. Blood test or an assessment, you might be asked to explain the control of blood glucose levels. And if you're a visual learner and you like drawing pictures to help you learn, this is one way you can do it. You draw the stomach, you draw the small intestine, and then how food goes into the stomach, how it goes from the stomach where digestion starts and how it then moves into the small intestine where the food gets digested into smaller bits. Now, these pink dots represent the building blocks or the nutrients, like glucose, um, that is the product of digestion. Now, the glucose is going to be absorbed into the bloodstream, which means as the blood passes through the blood vessel, the blood glucose level will continuously go up and up. Now obviously the reason for the glucose going into the bloodstream is so that it can actually go to the cells of the body. Now usually the glucose goes into the cell by diffusion but when there's a huge amount of glucose in the bloodstream like straight after a meal you're going to find that the pancreas is required. Now the pancreas have these little groups of cells called islets of Langerhans within them and in the groups of cells we have in the islets of Langerhans we've got the beta cells which I've made blue here and these beta cells are going to make a hormone called insulin. Now insulin is responsible for three things. The first it's going to obviously increase the rate at which glucose gets absorbed by the cells indicated here by the number one. So those three arrows show you the number one, how the um, absorption of glucose from the blood into the cell increases. The second thing here is where the mitochondria uh, come in and that's where insulin increases the rate of respiration that happens inside the mitochondria. Now obviously thirdly um, insulin will actually take the glucose, if there was an excess of glucose, um, it will convert the glucose into glycogen. And glucose is actually stored in the form of glycogen in both your liver and your muscles. There's enough glycogen stored for in case in future you skip a meal, at least you've got some storage energy stored in the form of glycogen. Insulin will continue lowering the blood glucose level until it may reach a point where the glucose level becomes too low. And if the blood glucose level becomes too low, your pancreas again is going to detect it. But in this case, it will be another group of cells here shown in green, also in the islets of Langerhans, but these cells are called the alpha cells. So within the islets of Langerhans, there's alpha cells, and these alpha cells 
are going to secrete the second hormone called glucagon. And glucagon is going to go and do two things. The first thing that glucagon does is that it converts glycogen back to glucose. So indicated here by number one, the glycogen is converted back into glucose. That obviously means now we're going to have more glucose within the cell. So that means the second thing that can happen now is that that extra glucose now gets passed from the cell back into the bloodstream. And as the glucose passes back into the bloodstream, the blood glucose levels are going to rise to normal again. In case you're not a visual learner and pictures is not your thing, well then this diagram is more of a, like a word summary. And it says where it shows you when glucose levels are high, how insulin will lower it by increasing absorption, increasing respiration, and converting glucose to glycogen. Or on the other hand, when glucose levels are too low, glucagon is going to release be released to raise it again by converting glycogen back to glucose or moving the glucose from the cells back into the bloodstream. Either way, the drawing. Or this diagram should help you remember the process. This is extremely important because they ask this in every assessment, in every exam.